Sorry. Jesus. The Vivian Award ceremony will be starting soon. Distinguished guests, Romance Writers of America is proud to welcome you to the inaugural Vivian Awards Ceremony. Your host for the evening is an award-nominated author who writes for readers who don't usually get to see themselves in stories and believes it's never too late for love. Welcome, Caraway Cotter. Welcome to the inaugural Vivian Award Ceremony, and a special welcome to our viewers joining us on YouTube as we live stream tonight's big event. We're thrilled to share RWA's biggest night of the year with you. When asked to be the MC, I jumped at the chance because my favorite movie is Romancing the Stone. Joan Wilder starts out, as most of us do, quiet, stay-at-home writers with uh, a cat for company, often celebrating the completion of our manuscript with the last of the wine. We sweep our readers off on an adventure where they fall in love with our protagonists and demand the siblings, best friends, random barista's story before we're finished with the next planned... What? Oh. I'm sorry. Our theme is romancing the future. Well, you know what? That works too. Romance has always been about whisking readers away to some new and unexpected place, whether it be on a cruise, in a haunted house, or in a room with only one bed. Some place they can safely fall in love, like riding through the countryside or turning up the heat in the kitchen. It's also about adventure, like battling an evil ruler or surviving the open sea. And just like Joan Wilder, we're sometimes taken out of our comfort zones and asked to broaden our horizons. The one thing they all have in common is the HEA. That's happily ever after for the friends and family watching. So come along as we build a new road, looking ahead and always moving toward romance. Tonight, we find out who won in contemporary romance, erotic romance, historical romance, mainstream fiction with a central romance, romance with religious or spiritual elements, romantic suspense, speculative romance, best first published book, and most anticipated romance. In some categories, we'll have winners for short, mid, and long form books. It's going to be a fun night. And before we know, it'll be over in the twinkling, twinkling of an eye but that might just be residual glitter. To start us off on our journey, we're going to briefly visit the past and learn about one of RWA's founders and the wonderful woman our award is named after. Most RWA members recognize the name Vivian Stevens as that of our founder, but how did it happen? The short answer is through determination, intuition, and vision. The full answer is even more impressive. When Vivian Stevens joined Dell Candlelight Romance as an editor in 1979, the line was in danger of closing if sweet contemporaries and romance historicals couldn't compete with the powerhouses of Harlequin and Avon. Rather than accept the dismal numbers and possible discontinuation of Candlelight, Miss Stevens looked for answers at the source readers. 
What she learned was that the modern woman wanted more sensuality in category romance and heroines who were less naive and more empowered. Taking this feedback to heart, Ms. Stevens acquired Amy Loren's Morning Rose, Evening Savage, a significant departure from the rest of Candlelight's lineup. It was exactly what the readers wanted. The book's success encouraged Ms. Stevens to acquire more such manuscripts and prompted her to launch the Candlelight Ecstasy Romance line for Dell. This propensity for pushing boundaries was a hallmark of Ms. Stevens' work in romance publishing, extending not just to the content that was allowed between the covers, but also who was on them. Under Ms. Stevens' guidance, Candlelight published Rosalind Wells' Entwined Destinies in 1980, the first category romance by a Black author with Black protagonists. And that was only the beginning. Ms. Stevens actively sought books by Asian, Black, Latinx, and Indigenous authors that featured diverse and multicultural characters. She also crafted a marketing campaign focused on promoting what she termed ethnic romances, which were intended to represent the melting pot of America. Readers of color, she knew, were an untapped market for the industry and deserved to see themselves as romantic leads. Outside of her efforts to broaden category romance itself, Ms. Stevens took strides to help writers push their work and their understanding of the industry to the next level. Throughout her career, she consistently sought to demystify the publishing process for authors and provided guidance for how to stretch their writing to fit the market's new demands without changing their stories completely. This instinct to educate and deep understanding of the genre can also be seen in interviews where she talks about incorporating little lectures on the different kinds of kisses into her workshops. Her faith in romance writers and their ability to learn and grow is evident. A look at the books Ms. Stevens used during her time in publishing further reflects the breadth and the depth of her knowledge. There are volumes focused on the industry and more technical aspects of writing, some of which have Ms. Stevens' personal notes in the margins. There are academic examinations of romance, taboo, tropes, and beauty. There are self-help style books focused on the priorities of the modern American woman in the 80s, namely her own job, her own ambitions, and her own life. Having a partner was just an attractive bonus. And then of course, there are the romance focused volumes covering the entire range of sensuality. It is impossible not to marvel at Ms. Stevens' commitment to improving romance publishing and her deep respect for romance writers and readers alike. So it's not surprising really that when a group of writers from Texas approached her about starting an organization specifically for romance writers, a place where they could hone their craft and make connections in the publishing world. Ms. Stevens agreed to lend her voice and considerable sway to the goal. Minutes from the first meeting of RWA shows the scope she already envisioned. Talk of chapters throughout the country, sources of information and support for the membership, and how to draw industry professionals and their expertise to the annual conferences. From the very inception of RWA, Ms. Stevens knew what it could be, a force to push the boundaries of romance publishing and create a more diverse industry. Sandra Kitt said it best at the 2019 RWA conference. Vivian Stevens had a clear and forward thinking idea of what romance is, what women want to read, and how to bring the genre always into the future. That may explain why Ms. Stevens' favorite phrase was, get to it, and so we shall. With our eyes on the future and our hearts, minds, and keyboards working together to reach it, RWA is honored to present the first ever Vivian Award to our founder, Ms. Vivian Stevens. Ms. Stevens was unable to attend tonight's ceremony, so accepting the Vivian on her behalf is RWA past president, Shirley Hailstock.
I'm Shirley Halestock, and I am honored to accept this award on behalf of Vivian Stevens. I spoke with her earlier this week, and she is grateful and humbled to be honored with an award in her name in its inaugural year. In Vivian's words, little did she know that the organization she founded would grow into a billion dollar industry and support the careers and families of some of the best writers with a sisterhood that is both supportive and empowered. Vivian thanks RWA and the authors, past, present, and future, who write stories of love in all its wondrous shades. Romance novels support the changes in the world and show the most important thing known to man, love. Thank you. Now let's head into the future with our first category. Our first presenter writes rom-coms and regencies that a reviewer called steamy and fun with wonderfully complex characters and is the president of the Greater Seattle RWA chapter which each fall runs an annual Emerald City Writers Conference the largest regional romance writers conference on the west coast here to present the Vivian Award for Romantic Suspense mid -Lift. Please welcome Jenny Hartwell. Writers of mid-length romantic suspense, like tonight's finalists, pack one heck of a ride into their stories. With fast-paced narratives and characters that make us swoon, cheer, and jeer in turn, they whip readers into worlds of danger and intrigue that show hope and justice are inextricably linked and the best happily ever afters are earned when both triumph. The Vivian finalists for romantic suspense mid-length are Harbor, Claire Boston, Bantilly Publishing. Canine Protector by Julie Miller. Harlequin. Lovely Digits by Janine Englert, Soulmate Publishing. Storm by Janie Crouch, Self-Published. And the Vivian goes to, three, Storm by Janie Crouch. I was so honored just to be a finalist in this inaugural season of the Vivian Award. I am proud to be a romance author and I am proud to be a part of the Romance Writers of America Association and what they are striving to become. So just to be a finalist was such an honor, but to win, yeah, baby. Uh, first and foremost, I have to thank my husband and my four children who have supported me in this writing endeavor from day one, despite all the fits I've thrown and throwing myself all over the floor with all the books that I've written. I'd like to also thank my parents, my dad, who still occasionally can't remember the term romance novel and calls my work sex books to whoever he's talking to. And most especially, I want to thank my mother, whose own love of reading started mine and who took me to my first writer's conference long before writing was even a career option in my mind, so thank you. A special thanks to Susan Stoker, who has created a world where other authors can write. And from the bottom of my heart, I wanna thank my readers who have joined me in this journey in creating these characters. Thank you so much. Our next presenter, besides writing novels set in the early to mid 20th century, enjoys stone carving, photography, and is the president of the Romance Writers of America, New York City, Inc. chapter, which from its founding in 1986, has been an inclusive organization that welcomes romance authors at all stages of their careers, here to present the Vivian Award for Erotic Romance Please welcome Ursula Rene. There's opening the bedroom door and then there's kicking it wide open. 
In erotic romance, the sensual journey our protagonists experience is just as important as their romantic journey. Whether it is learning to take control or give it up in the right circumstances, or gaining the confidence to explore new facets of themselves and their sexual appetites, each step they take is toward a brighter future. The finalists for the Vivian in erotic romance are Rebecca Hunter, Pure and Satisfaction, Publisher, Harlequin. Nikki Sloan, The Redemption, Shady Creek Publishing. And the Vivian goes to Pure Satisfaction, Rebecca Hunter. Wow. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I'm um, very shocked and honored to, to receive this award. Um, I have a bunch of people to thank. Uh, thank you to my editor, Katie Gowry, for your always insightful feedback and for believing in this book and series. Thank you to the whole Harlequin team, especially the anonymous copywriter who noted the places where she snort laughed <laughs> while she read it. Um, thank you to my amazing agent, Melissa Jiglinski, for believing in my writing. Um, thank you for helping me shape my ideas into solid stories. Um, this book was written during the pandemic in part, and it's been a really tough writing time for me. So I want to give a special thanks to my support my support system around writing. Thank you to Stacey Finns for your friendship and support around everything writing related and beyond. Um, thank you to the Tuesday night struggle, struggle bus crew, Addie Woolrich, Amy Z. Chan, Anne Mallory, Elizabeth Minozzi, Jacqueline Yao, Carney Wentworth, K Kilby Blades, and R.L. Merrill for support, advice, and so much laughter. And thank you to my wonderful family, especially Mr. Hunter for all your love and devotion and for all the tech support, even tonight <laughs> when the things weren't working out. And lastly, thank you so much to RWA for everything you've done to the board, um, for all the work you've put in um, to make this um, organization shine. And thank you for everyone for coming. I'm really honored. Our next presenter writes smoochy, snarky contemporary romance for the world she wants to believe in and is the president of the Contemporary Romance Writers RWA chapter, which has robust mentoring, workshops, and writing sprint groups. Here to present the Vivian Award for Historical Romance mid length please welcome Melanie Green. Historical romance authors are experts at sweeping us away to times of grand gestures and even grander stakes. Against the backdrop of history, their protagonists touch our hearts and give us the strength to stand against forces that would keep us down. Tonight's finalists are no exception. They show us that love, revenge, valor, deceit, and passion can turn the ordinary into the spectacular, and that love stories help us bridge the past with our present and future. The Vivian finalists for historical romance mid-length are Barbara Bettis for For This Night Only, published by the Wild Rose Press. Valerie Bowman for The Footman and I, published by June 3rd Enterprises. Robin Chalmers for A Song of Secrets, self-published. Louisa Cornell for A Study in Passion, published by Scarsdale. And the Vivian goes to A Study in Passion by Louisa Cornell. And the Vivian goes to A Study in Passion by Louisa Cornell. Okay, great. I didn't write a speech. 
Um, uh, okay. Um, I, uh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, great. I didn't write a speech. I need to thank RWA, um, uh, everyone involved okay. in the I RWA Awards, um, um, everybody who judged and read the book. I am stunned and amazed to be in the company uh, okay, okay, okay. of okay, these fabulous authors. I need to thank I'm hearing the echo because I'm technically challenged. Um, there's a reason I write historical romance. I'm an idiot when it comes to computers. Thank you to um, Southern Magic romance writers, uh, Regency fiction writers, um, everyone who ever judged any of the contest I've entered. There's a reason I write historical romance. I'm an idiot when it comes to My fabulous sisters, Christine Hughes Patron and Andrea Stein, uh, who I couldn't do anything without them. Everyone who uh, any of the contests I've entered. Okay, I'm, I'm just, I'm gobsmacked. I'm still just stunned. Um, I don't know how to turn it off, Caraway. Somebody, I don't know how to turn it off. Um, are we having fun yet? Uh, I'm just, I'm gobsmacked. I appreciate the board. I appreciate Vivian Stevens lending her name to this award. And, um, okay, I'm going to turn my sound off and start screaming in a minute. Just thank you to, to my publisher, Tara Scott, to my editor, Casey, who makes me look good. And, um, I don't even know what else to say. Thank you. Turn me off. Just thank you to, to my publisher, Tara Scott. Our next presenter is a four-time Golden Heart finalist who writes about brooding men and bold women and is the president of the Valley Forge Romance Writers Chapter, which has been a vibrant RWA chapter for more than 25 years, here to present the Vivian Award for Contemporary Romance Long. Please welcome Eileen Emerson. If you like side characters who get almost as much page time as protagonists and a variety of subplots to choose from, you probably feel right at home reading long contemporary romance. The characters in these stories are always working towards where and often who they want to be, striving and failing and striving again until they reach the goal that makes it all worthwhile. These stories prove that while complexity and nuance may not be simple, they make the world a richer and better place. Weaving these elements together into a stunning, cohesive whole requires delicate crafting for authors, authors like tonight's finalists. Their characters and the readers who love them know the fight for happily ever after can be a long, tough road, but we can all get there. The finalists for the Vivian and Contemporary Romance Long are Nicola Marsh, the Boy Toy, Berkeley. Susan Antony, Cherokee Summer, The Wild Rose Press. Jessica Ruddick, False Start, Peak Ink Press. Lara Lynn Doran, A Fast Woman, A Three Dogs Day LLC. Tracy Livesey, Like Lovers Do, Avon. Bronwyn Sell, Lovestruck, HQ. Sarah Desai, The Marriage Game, Berkeley. And the Vivian goes to All Start by Jessica Ruddick. <laughs> um, I didn't do my makeup or wear anything fancy. I'm just wearing a t-shirt because I figured if 
there was any way I was going to win, it was when I didn't get ready for it. Um, I, I truly didn't expect to win in a category with so many um, other great finalists, especially my friend Tracy. So this is just crazy. Um, I'd like to thank RWA. I started as a member back in, I think, 2000. Seven, I think it was. So I've been around for a while. And um, without RWA, I would have never gotten to be published. So I'd like to thank RWA and all the people that I've met through them. I'd like to thank my mother for always believing in me and giving me the lifelong um, love of reading. And I'd also like to thank my, my second mom, my Aunt Karen, who um, every book I write is her favorite and the best book she's ever written. Um, I'd like to thank the Dreamweavers, who are my Golden Heart class of 2014 um, sisters, and they are, they're my family, they are my tribe, and I never would have found them without the um, RWA Golden Heart contest, and I just love them all. Um, I'd like to thank my uh, writing bestie, my bestie, my uh, soul sister, um, Marnie Blake, she actually was my critique partner, my content editor for this book. And um, she's also my biggest cheerleader. And so um, I'd just like to thank her. I'd also like to thank my husband, Chris. Sometimes he believed in me even more than I believed in myself. And sometimes I think that, you know, he wanted this even more than I wanted it. I, he's been so supportive. And thank you to my sons as well, who, um, they don't exactly, they're 14 and 11. They don't exactly understand what I write. They call it the football book. Um, they don't really understand that it's about more than just football, but um, they inspire me every day to be better. So I really didn't expect this. Thank you so much. Congratulations to the winners so far this evening. I have a powerful need to go add some books to my to be read pile. To help me choose, why don't you vote for your favorite tropes during the break?
I've learned from several of tonight's finalists that food is a good way to your lover's heart. So I've been preparing hors d'oeuvres, hoping to get my sweetie to fall further in love with me. The timer's about to go off, so let's get back to the finalists. Our next presenter is a tea drinker and whiskey lover who writes historical romances set in the Georgian period and is the president of the Southern Louisiana chapter, which hosts a yearly writer's retreat for aspiring and published writers where you can hone your craft, learn new techniques, and network with other writers. Here to present the Vivian Award for Romance with Religious or Spiritual Elements, please welcome Devin Alexander. Romance with Religious or Spiritual Elements provides readers with beautiful love stories featuring protagonists on a faith journey as they build toward their happily ever after. These uplifting stories remind us that positivity, acceptance, and happiness are always within reach and that we are never alone. The Vivian finalists for Romance with Religious or Spiritual Elements are Karen Wittemeyer at Love's Command. Publisher, Bethany House. Bethany Turner, Hadley Beckett's Next Dish. Published by Ruvel. Michelle Lindo Rice, Michelle Stimson, Small Town Faith, self-published. Becky Wade, Stay With Me, published by Bethany House. And the Vivian goes to At Love's Command by Karen Wittmeyer. Oh my goodness, this is so exciting. I am just delighted and so honored and humbled by this. Um, I am just thrilled to pieces. Thank you so much. I want to really appreciate um, my fellow finalists. I'm friends with um, several of them, and I just respect them so much. And I'm just honored to be mentioned with them. I want to give a special thanks to all the contest coordinators. This is such a big contest to run. So much time and effort was put into this, and I appreciate all of you. I appreciate all the judges for all of their time that they gave. Um, we are nothing without our readers, and even those that read for contests, they are such a blessing. So thank you for that. Um, none of us write alone. We have um, partners. I have critique partners that um, walk with me every step of the way. Um, my editorial team at Bethany House is just such a blessing. I'm so thankful for them. Um, and of course, my family, I can't do anything without them. They're always so eager to support, even if it means my husband has to do laundry. He's willing to do that so that I can write on the weekend. So thank you, Wes, for hanging in there with me. Um, finally, I just want to say thank you to Jesus. He is the author of the greatest love story ever told, and I can do nothing without him. So thank you so much. Our next presenter writes smart, sexy romance for smart, sexy women and is the president of the Age to Perfection Season Romance Writers of America chapter, which is the newest chapter in RWA, here to present the Vivian for Contemporary Romance Short. Please welcome Jennifer Bacall. It's no secret if you want to fall in love in record time, you turn to short contemporary romance. And should you have any doubts about that, you need only check out tonight's finalist. With razor-focused plots and exquisitely crafted characters, these stories take readers on a whirlwind journey that never fails to satisfy. As we move into a new generation of romance, short contemporary will surely stories remain a touchstone, a haven, and masterclass all rolled into one as we move for re romance readers and writers alike. The finalists for the Vivian in Contemporary Romance Short are one, Reese Ryan, Engaging the Enemy, published by Harlequin Desire. Sophia Singh Sasan, Marriage by Arrangement, published by Harlequin Desire. Philip Will William Stover, 
There Galapagos My Heart, published by Iron Bridge Workshop. Laura Kay, Worth Fighting For, published by 1001 Dark Nights. And the Vivian goes to... Reese Ryan, Engaging the Enemy. I am, <laughs> it means so much to me to win this award for a, a, an award named after founder Vivian Stevens and for this book, a book that is the book of my heart <laughs> at this time <laughs> in our organization's history. Thank you to all of my amazing readers and to everyone who read this book and felt like it belonged here. Thank you to Piper Hughley for encouraging me to enter RWA's contest because you can't win if you don't play the game. Thank you to the Harlequin Desire team for all that you've done to help give a home to refine and promote my Bourbon Brothers series, which has become a multi-award winning series that celebrates Black love. Thank you to Charles Grumsman, my ever patient editor. You get me and I'm so grateful for your insight, guidance and partnership. And I promise you, I'll get you those edits on Monday. Thank you to my agent, Pamela Hardy for being so proactive and for caring not just about the business of writing, but about my personal well-being. Thank you to Harlequin Desire Executive Editor Stacey Boyd for the opportunity to join this amazing staple of romance authors who feel like family, and for your diligence in making Harlequin Desire one of the most diverse romance imprints in the market today. Thank you to Bill Lawton, Tony Horvath, and the incredible Harlequin Desire art team for taking my vision of these characters and translating it so brilliantly into gorgeous attention-grabbing covers that have helped readers find my books. Thank you to my writing bestie, Kay Sterling, for always being there for me, for believing in me and encouraging me, and for those early morning and late night writing sprints. Thank you to my family for being patient and understanding. And to my husband of 32 years, for which he deserves an award. <laughs> I love you, babe. And thank you so much for always being my hero. <clears throat> and I want to thank RWA. I want to thank the current and the past board members who've worked so hard to make this organization more fair to all of its members. The organization is not perfect, but we've taken measurable steps to get there. And I appreciate your diligent work and your sacrifice. Whether we are writing a book, writing a song, being a parent, we don't always get it right the first, second, or third time. We stumble and we fall. But I am so proud that this organization has gotten back up lip busted, nose bloody, and is willing to continue the fight to support and advocate for all of its authors in a way that is fair and equal. Congratulations to all the nominees tonight who are also a part of this inaugural class of Vivian Stevens award finalists and winners, and particularly to those who are in this category. William, Philip William Stover, I'm so thrilled that you, you're Fantastic book is in this category as well. That Sophia Sings the Song, who is my sister at Desire, as well as we share the same editor. And Laura Kay, whose Harding series that I read and fell in love with her writing style and her as a person. I'm such a fangirl. I am so honored to be in the category with all of you. So thank you so much. So on behalf of Parker and Kaylee and myself, thank you so much to all of you. Our next presenter writes historical young adult romance set in Alaska. She is also the president of the Alaska chapter of Romance Writers of America, best known for the Midnight Sun cover contest that is presented at the Conference for Writers and Illustrators, which they co-host with the Alaska Writers Guild. Here to present the Vivian Ford Mainstream Fiction with Central Romance, please welcome Lynn Lovegreen. Who doesn't love a thought-provoking and meaningful story filled with interesting characters? 
The only way to make it better would be to add romance. These books remind us no matter how low a protagonist's life may be at the moment, there are always brighter days ahead. The characters navigate life with optimism, resilience, and a dash of romance. And that's something we can all celebrate. Sasha Summers, Accidentally Family, Entangled Publishing. Sarah Robinson, Every Last Drop, Self-Published. Laura Trenum, An Everyday Hero, St. Martin's Press. Fiona Lucas, The Last Goodbye, HarperCollins HQ. And the Vivian goes to An Everyday Hero by Laura Trentham. Trentham. Sorry, Trentham. Oh my gosh. I am shocked, uh, especially considering the wonderful people I was nominated with. And I first have to give a shout out to my Golden Heart class, which is the same as Jessica Ruddock's. And I'm so proud that we both won tonight. Um, we, our group still talks every single week and we share our ups and downs together, whether it's writing or in our personal lives. And I do not know what I would do without them. Um, next, I want a, a special shout out to Eileen Rothschild, my editor at St. Martin's Press and Kevin Lyon, my agent, because I never would have thought to even attempt a women's fiction book, and they really encouraged me to do that. And I absolutely loved writing it. I think it's probably the best book I've ever written. Um, a shout out to my husband, who gets to um, enjoy my reading and writing obsession, um, and to my parents, who made reading just a part of our life from the very beginning, every Sunday, we would just shut down the house and everybody would go to their corners and read books. And I wanna say a big thanks to my readers and especially uh, military wives who this series was sort of dedicated to. Um, my family was not in the military. And when I get an email from readers saying, man, you really nailed this. It's one of the best emails I've ever gotten. So a big shout out to all my readers and I'm so happy to be part of the Vivian inaugural class. This has been a bucket list item for me and I could not be more thrilled. Uh, thank you very much. Our next presenter writes books for anyone who likes characters who are a little bit quirky, but definitely swoon worthy. When not writing, she can be found rewatching 90s rom-coms and crying over the same sappy moments every single time. She is the president of the Young Adult Chapter of RWA, which can help you build believable, complex, and yes, even lovable teenage characters. Just remember, say it like a pirate. Yarr! Here to present the Vivian Award for Speculative Romance Long, please welcome Jennifer Lope. Epic fantasy adventures to defeat an unstoppable magical entity. Immortal beings who spend their lives searching for redemption or meaning. Sweeping space operas that pit an underdog resistance against an all-powerful ruling force. With stories like these, it's no wonder that speculative fiction draws rebels and romantics alike. Tonight's finalists assure us that we don't have to settle for a world that makes us feel small or insignificant and prove that everyone has a role to play in the quest to make a fair, welcoming future. They inspire us with their reminder that the world we want and deserve is always achievable if we remain steadfast in our convictions, let love guide us, and refuse to give up. The finalists for the Vivian in Speculative Romance Long are Curse of Seduction by C. R. Robertson, published by C. R. Robertson. Echoes of the Runes by Christina Courtney, published by Headline Review. A Stitch in Time 
by Kelly Armstrong, published by KLA Frick, Inc. Written in Water by Elizabeth Schechter, published by Self Published. And the Vivian goes to A Stitch in Time by Kelly Armstrong. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, this is a little bit of a surprise, so thank you so much. Um, it is great to have won this, particularly because this novel was born at our WA. It was born at the 2018 conference um, when I attended a, uh, a, a uh, seminar on writing for your id by the always wonderful Jennifer Lynn, Lynn Barnes. I went back to my uh, room and I was on social, social media saying that I would love to write a time travel romance, Victorian haunted house, mystery romance and I was half kidding half serious and the response was positive enough that I felt that I could actually move forward with it and that became a session time so thank you to Yanni Kuznia at Subterranean Press for the uh, hardcover limited edition hardcover of this. Um, and thank you to uh, Melissa Marr, my critique partner and developmental editor, to the always wonderful Maggie Morris, my copy edit editor. And um, thank you to my family. Obviously they have been with me through this, this entire wonderful, weird career. Um, and thank you to the judges and to everyone at our WA for putting together this inaugural event. I know how uh, how hard you all worked on it, and thank you again. So many wonderful books. Congratulations to all of our winners so far. I've toasted so many times, I need a refill. While I'm getting that, why don't you tell us what kind of books you like to read with some more opinion polls.
some dame came in during the break asking for my help in discovering who won Romance Suspense Long. So uh, let's get on with the awards so I can get lit, uh, paid. Our next presenter enjoys writing steamy, diverse, and seductive romance in both paranormal and contemporary, a self-proclaimed out-of-the-closet nerd. She admits she can't seem to avoid adding a bit of snark or geekdom to all of her stories and is the president of the Simra chapter, which is dedicated to supporting authors who weave tales of love that dissolve barriers. Here to present the Vivian Award for Romantic Suspense Long. Please welcome Laurel Kremit. For a heart pounding read that'll grab you from the very first page, look no further than Romantic Suspense. It has it all from long buried secrets, life and death stakes, love on the line. Just look at tonight's finalists. Amid murder plots, arson, and hostage rescues, these authors prove that justice served and love returned is a potent combination and one we all deserve. Tonight's Vivian finalists for Romantic Suspense Long are. Burn by Stephanie Rowe, self-published. Code of Conduct by April White Published by Smarty Pants Romance Cold Wicked Lies by Tony Anderson Published by Tony Anderson Inc. Hail Mary by Hope Anika Self-published Honor Avenged by Tanya Burroughs Published by Entangled Amara And the Vivian goes to Hail Mary by Hope Annika. Uh, Ms. Annika couldn't be with us tonight. She asked us uh, asked me to read the following if she won. And she did. It's an amazing honor to have been nominated for the Vivian. I never expected to win. To be among a group of such talented writers is an incredible privilege, and I'm very grateful to have been included. Thank you. Our next presenter is a paranormal and fantasy author who loves plots that move hot and fast, feisty heroines with sass, heroes with heart, a dash of snark, and oodles of HEAs. She is the president of the Austin RWA chapter, which have weekly sprints, extra workshops, pitch contests, book club, and more. Here to present the Vivian Award for Speculative Romance mid length please welcome Abigail Owen. Speculative Romance Fiction is the limitless sandbox for authors' what-ifs, where they can play out what the world would be like with magic or dragons or faster-than-light technology. How does altering the past affect the present? How does changing the present affect the future? As you can see in tonight's finalist, these stories show us that stepping away from the status quo may come with pitfalls, but humanity prevails. The characters rise to the occasion and they encourage us to do the same. More than that, they show us that regardless of spells, epic adventures, or alien encounters, the need for love and connection remains universal. The finalist for the Vivian in Speculative Romance Mid-Length is The Twixt by Dorinda Jones, published by Feather and Leaf, LLC. Goes to... Betwixt by Dorinda Jones. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, this is such an honor. I know I look weird for some reason, but I, just to be part of this inaugural group of the Vivians, the fact that RWA did this and put the credit where the credit was due. I'm just so honored. I can't even, I want to thank RWA so much. 
um, for all the hard work. Thank you to the judges. This is a labor of love and I'm, I appreciate it so much. We all do. Um, I want to thank the Fab 13. So this was actually my first, my very first indie project that I did all myself. And so um, the Fab 13, which is Paranormal Women's Fiction Group, helped me through all of it. They were amazing. They invited me into their secret club and, and um, I'm just so honored to be here. Um, thank you to my amazing people, Dana, Netters, and Tracy. Um, the book obviously would not be what it is without you. Uh, thank you to Lyra, my uh, New Mexico RWA chapter. Um, thank you to my writing, writing coach and good friend, Jeffy Kennedy, who um, uh, cracks the whip when she has to, thank God. Um, <laughs> thank you to my agent, Alexandra Machinis, and my editors, uh, Jennifer Enderlin and Alexandra uh, Seeholster, who uh, it just, I am here where I am because of you guys. And, and I can't even thank you enough. Um, thank you to my amazing Grimlets. I have the best readers ever. Thank you to my family. You know who you are. I uh, apologize for, for anything. Thank you to my Ruby sisters, my, my uh, 2009 Golden Heart finalists. Um, I'm the second winner from our group tonight. And so I have to say, of course, Ruby domination. Thank you. <laughs> Our next presenter is a beekeeper by day and names her queen bees after the flowers she paints on their hives. She is the president of the Northeast Ohio Romance Writers Chapter, which has members from Ohio, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia here to present the Vivian Award for Historical Romance Long. Please welcome Chloe Flowers. Historical Romance effortlessly transports us back in time. These authors take us on journeys to majestic castles, elegant ballrooms, oiled flower covered highlands. How about that brogue, huh? Cannon fire filled battlefields or anywhere else we want to visit. They give us characters that are wonderful to root for along the way. The best of them, like tonight's finalists, hold up a mirror as we look into the past and prove the power of love transcends time, and in some cases, eternity. The Vivian finalists for historical romance, long, are Bronwyn Perry. The Clothier's Daughter, published by Firetail Press. Kathy Maxwell, His Secret Mistress, published by Avon Books. Mary Jo Putney, Once a Spy, published by Kensington. Loretta Chase, Ten Things I Hate About the Duke, published by Avon Books. And the Vivian goes to 10 Things I Hate About the Duke by Loretta Chase. Ms. Chase couldn't be with us tonight. She asked us to read the following if she won. 10 Things I Hate About the Duke was not a cooperative book. We fought. For years, we almost broke up. No, we did break up about 18 times. So imagine how it felt to learn that aggravating book made the finals for RWA's first Vivian Award. Now imagine the feelings tonight. While you do that, I'll uncork the champagne and make a toast to the legions who make it, made this happen. Thank you, all of you. Vivian Stevens for getting the whole thing going in the first place. RWA and judges for all your hard work during difficult times. RWA, nope, family, friends, and colleagues for your unstinting support. Editor Mei Chen and agent Nancy Yost for patience and help well above and beyond your mission. And most of all, my wonderful readers, 
who've made the best of all careers possible and kept it going for more years than it would be tactful to count. Thank you. Our next presenter is the author of African American Romantic Suspense, enjoys planning author events, is a certified Canva addict, and is the president of the D.C. area chapter, Washington Romance Writers, which hosts some of the best mini session topics throughout the month for published authors and aspiring writers here to present the Vivian Award for Contemporary Romance mid -Lymph. Please welcome Tracy Lydia Gardner. Contemporary romance is supposed to be set in the here and now, but more often than not, the setting isn't exactly the real world. As tonight's finalists prove, contemporary romance shows us the world as it should be, as we want it to be, where opportunity, acceptance, and love are granted to everyone. In doing so, contemporary romance serves as both motivation and blueprint for helping us to create that more loving and just world. It's up to us to follow their example. The finalists for the Vivian in Contemporary Romance mid-length are Robin Bielman, Heartthrob, published by Thule Publishing. Kimberly Trout, Pilot Down, Kimberly Trout. Michaela Gray, Roughing, self-published by Michaela Gray. Kilby Blades, The Secret Ingredient, published by Lux Publishing. Karen Foley, Swipe Right for a Cowboy, by Thule Publishing. Sarah Whitney, Tempting Taste, published by Love Spark Press. The Quet, Under His Protection, published by Brooklyn Girl, Inc. And the Vivian goes to Tempting Taste by Sarah Whitney. Wow. All right. Um, <laughs> thank you to RWA. My goodness. Uh, what an honor to be part of the inaugural Vivian class. Uh, thank you for creating an award to recognize Vivian Stevens. Thank you for acknowledging the challenges that face RWA as an organization and encouraging all of us to work together toward those challenges. Uh, to the judges, I know this was incredible work and the staff of RWA to put all this together. Thank you for that. Uh, to my uh, local RWA chapter, my Golden Heart Group, the Omegas, for your encouragement and, and patience and kindness. And of course, the other finalists. Uh, thank you for your words that build this vibrant community that we're all a part of. And thanks to everybody who picked up Tempting Taste, especially those of you who sent me gifts of who you picture the hero to be. I treasured every one of them in my heart. Um, I was in a workshop today with the incredible Becca Syme, a productivity coach, and she recommended that for people with personalities like me, I should surround myself with people who are excellent. And my thought was, I am so lucky because I do that. Um, my editors, Sue Brown Moore and Victory, to Sarah Editorial for the sensitivity read, for my writer friends who've taught me how to be an author, for my pals from the Heaving Bosoms podcast who make me laugh every day, my family and my civilian friends who don't really read romance, but they support me no matter what. I am so blessed to be surrounded by all these excellent people who push me, they keep me writing, and they keep me a, a good friend in return. So... In the immortal words of Bill S. Preston, Esquire, be excellent to each other. Thank you all so much. I don't know about you. Uh, no, I do know about you. You know what? We've been at this for a while. And I know I could use a restroom break. If you're back before I am, why don't you give us your thoughts on your romance go-tos?
I might have read too many of these speculative fiction books, but my wolf senses are telling me that a couple of great people are about to be recognized for their spectacular service to RWA. The RWA Service Award is not for service to individual chapters, but is intended to honor repeated commitments of service to RWA and is presented for cumulative efforts. This year's recipient is Gail Kianese. Here to present the RWA Service Award, please welcome the Secretary of RWA, C. Shalov. Good evening, everyone. There is a poem by William Allen Drungle titled The Bridge Builder. The poem is about an old man who is able to cross a vast and wide chasm, but he looks back and realizes that no one else will be able to do that. And so he decides to build a bridge. I think of Gail Kianese as a bridge builder that has helped to create opportunities and programs for all of our authors. She planned the first ever RWA virtual conference in less than eight weeks. During a pandemic, while we were attempting to navigate a new road, a new path forward in making RWA more inclusive and diverse. As if that wasn't impressive enough, Gail grabbed the reins and help to coordinate our first member retreat. And while she was at that retreat, she was planning our upcoming conference. In addition to her service as the workshop committee, she's been a chapter president and is now a candidate for the 2021-2022 president-elect of RWA. Somehow between Gail's service to RWA She's found time to become a multi-published author of contemporary romance, romantic mystery, and women's fiction. She's an avid reader across many genres and has been known to binge watch shows like Sons of Anarchy in the name of research. Originally from California, she's actually lived in eight states and three countries and, and says that's courtesy of the US Navy and she now calls Connecticut home with her real life hero of a husband, her amazing kids and her precious, if not demanding pups. One word is amazing. And that is why tonight it is my honor to present the RWA Service Award to Gail Kianese. Thank you, Gail. Hi everyone, I'm truly honored to have been chosen for this year's RWA Service Award. Volunteering both at the chapter and national levels has been my way to give back to all of you, to say thank you for sharing your knowledge, expertise, and kindness. It's been a great way to connect with so many writers and meet a lot of wonderful friends, and I'm just truly thankful to be part of your community, so thank you. The RWA Emma Merritt Service Award is presented for the accumulated body of work a member has contributed as a volunteer to RWA. The award is not only for service to individual chapters, but is intended to honor major commitments of service to RWA. A member may receive the RWA Emma Merritt Service Award only once in a lifetime. This year's recipient is Alyssa Day. Here to present the Emma Merritt Service Award, please welcome the president of RWA, LaQuette. Sorry about that. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Being president is not easy. Walking into a presidency, you think you know that. But the reality is more difficult than you can possibly imagine. Ask me how I know. Being president can often be a difficult, high pressured and lonely position to fill because at the end of the day, you're publicly accountable for every good or bad decision made. 
That fact can be a great deal to ask of someone during the best of times. During a catastrophe, the pressure is almost incapacitating. Again, ask me how I know. At the peak of a crisis and a pandemic, Alyssa Day volunteered to become president to help stabilize RWA and prevent its pending collapse. It was a thankless, overwhelming job, but she did it with strength and grace because she believed RWA was worth fighting for. Her dedication and determination were a steadying force when RWA and its members needed it most. Leading us into a successful virtual conference, a first for RWA, while simultaneously directing the development of the Vivian Awards. For her sacrifice and commitment to the organization in the face of such adversity, on behalf of RWA, its national board, chapters, and members, it is my distinct pleasure mm -hmm. to present the 2021 Emma Merritt Service Award to former president, Alyssa Day. Thank you, Alyssa. Wow. Thank you for that amazing introduction, Laquette. You warned me that you're going to make me cry and you weren't wrong. I'm very touched and honored by this. And congratulations to all the Vivian finalists and winners tonight. I'm so thrilled to see this happen. This year, huh? It's been one of the toughest years that our organization, and I would guess many of us personally, have ever faced. I know it was incredibly difficult here. In a way, it brings me full circle to say that. I joined RWA 20 years ago, just after another horrible time, 9-11. I'd wanted to write novels all my life, like probably everyone in this room, but never thought it could be a real job, only a fantasy that I couldn't even afford to dream. Because I'd been pretty poor growing up, the kind of poor that wonders sometimes where the next meal is coming from. The kind of poor that shops at the thrift store and hopes nobody in class mocks me for wearing their discarded clothes. I still remember the taste of shame in the back of my throat. So I didn't, I didn't want to be a poor writer. I wanted to be something that made money. I swore I'd never be poor again. And I put my dreams of writing aside. I went to law school. And I love law school. Go figure. <laughs> Turns out that helped me in being RWA president. As anybody on last year's board or the RWA staff can tell you, I love discussing and debating all sides of an issue, trying to get to the core of a problem, trying to be sure we're all considering all perspectives in order to find the best and most workable solution. This helped a lot when I was a trial lawyer, but on the board of a major organization like RWA, it was indispensable because volunteer organizations can be like herding cats. And that's before a horrible organizational implosion and before an international pandemic. So I noted that uh, Laquette used the word volunteer, and I had to laugh a little bit. Let's say that when Cisha Love and Laquette talked me into taking this job because they asked one more time than I turned it down, um, they can be very persuasive. But at the back of my mind was always this. I love the idea of what RWA can be. I've always loved that. I love the idea of what we can be when we fight for diversity, inclusion, and equity. I love the synergy of a giant room filled with romance writers talking plot and characters and turning points and publishing, Amazon reviews. I love my fellow writers so much. I can honestly say that many of my best friends in the world, and it is the world, we're international, are people I met through RWA, through 20 years of sharing rooms and drinks and meals of sharing good times, launching a new line with my first book, hitting that first list and another, my New York Times the first time, and sharing the bad times, the time my new genre crashed almost before publishers quit buying it, the times I missed deadlines when my chronic depression told me that I was a failure, that I wasn't talented, it wasn't special, and I would never be good enough. But you know what? This is RWA and we're romance writers. We are good enough. And you were there for me, my fellow authors. We made it through the hard times together and we celebrated the good times together. And that's the true joy of belonging to RWA. The RWA 2.0 that I know we can be. We can find our tribe. We can find people who also hear voices in their heads and feel compelled to tell those stories. And even as I say this, I know full well, 
I know full well that there have been times that RWA has failed many of us, those who don't enjoy the privilege that some others do. I know I never had to worry that the color of my skin or the fact of whom I chose to love would affect my career. Many did. RWA and publishing had and still has a lot of work to do, but we've made a start. And from that very first conference, Emerald City, Greater Seattle, October 2001, I knew RWA could be my writing home. We just needed to work together. So I started volunteering. I worked on conferences and served local and online chapters. I judged contests. So many contests. I taught classes in person and online because that's how we make RWA, our organization, into what we want it to be. We donate our time and our energy and our expertise. Sometimes we pour our blood, sweat, and tears, maybe even with some vodka on the side, into the work. Last year, lots and lots of vodka. I remember a few meetings with Laquette and Cisha Love and many of my other board members and, and the amazing RWA staff where a glass of wine or seven just felt like the thing to do. But we kept trying. We kept trying to make the dream of what an amazing writing organization can be come true. So please, my request to you, volunteer, take on a chapter position, help out at a conference, teach a class, join a committee, lift up your voice and your ideas so you can help make RWA 2.0 the best possible writing organization on the planet. And then one day, maybe even 20 years from now, some new friends will say, hey, you should come be president of RWA. And my advice, that's when you run. Run really, f- no, sorry. <laughs> Take on the opportunity because it's, it's an amazing organization and I, I believe in its future. Thank you so much to this year's RWA board for all of your hard work and for awarding the Emma Merritt Service Award to me. I share this award with my long suffering family who put up with the many, many, many hours I spent on this job and the many, many, many rants I made when things were at their worst. And they offered wise advice and a shoulder to cry on and a laugh. Thank you, Judd, Connor, and Lauren always. And I share it with Leslie Scantleberry and the incredible RWA staff who pulled off a Herculean task. And I share it with every single person on last year's board of directors, all of whom worked so very hard with me to keep the lights on and navigate the pandemic and turn RWA 2.0 into something we can all be proud of. Thank you to Leslie Hatchell and everyone who worked so hard to create the Vivian so we can have this amazing ceremony tonight that honors a true pioneer in romance publishing. Vivian Stevens, we are so honored. And thank you to this year's Vivian Committee for their hard work in getting this program to you. And finally, RWA is about you, the members. Keep writing, keep dreaming, and keep helping RWA move forward into the future. Because we're romance writers. We got this, baby. Thank you. Our next presenter writes HEAs with heat and humor and is the president of the RWA Kiss of Death chapter, which is the home of Daphne du Maurier Award for Excellence in Mystery and Suspense, here to present the Vivian Award for the most anticipated romance. Please welcome Aaron Novotny. One of the core tenets of a romance novel is belief. Regardless of obstacles, we ask our characters to believe in themselves, to believe in their dreams, and to believe in their love. We do the same with our readers, asking them to trust us to deliver the well-deserved happy ending they're looking for. It should come as no surprise then that a career in romance requires a similar belief, that readers will find us, that our stories will resonate with them, and that our characters will touch their hearts. For tonight's finalists, that belief has paid off. The Vivian finalists for the most anticipated romance are Michelle McCraw for 23 and You and Me, Janet Opedisano for Burning Cane, Dina Short for The Compound, Jane Duran, Love with complications. Ingrid Pierce for Trivial Pursuit.
and the Vivian goes to Burning Cane by Janet Opedisano. Oh. oh my god. Um so yeah, there you go. I've been telling my writing group who's on a watch party with me all night, I'm not gonna win, I'm not gonna win. And they're like, write a speech, write a speech. So anyway, I wrote a few things down. <laughs> um, first of all, I want to say thank you to um my husband and son for the patience and support. I spend a lot of hours in the writing cave away from them, um, but they keep pushing me forward. Um, I want to thank my alpha readers, my mom and uh, my aunt, who uh, they've read every horrible draft that I have ever written, and they've loved every moment of it. So I really appreciate that. Um, my writing group. Um, I'm pointing over here because they're on the screen right over there that I'm watching. Um, the Pitts Girls. I met these wonderful women uh, last spring, and I wouldn't be half the writer that I am today without them, uh, with their inspiration, encouragement, and reviewing, again, every crappy draft of everything I write. Um, my editor, <laughs> Miranda Darrow, and the whole Revise and Resub group. Miranda taught me so much about writing romance, about writing romantic suspense, and um, well, I'm going to keep working with her, so that's fantastic. Um, the other writers who were nominated with me, Michelle, Dina, Jane, and Ingrid, um, you are such an amazing group to be with this year. I am so proud of all of you, of all of you you've done, and I can't wait to see where your writing careers take you. Um, and finally, I'd like to thank my main characters. Um, Samantha and Antonio for refusing to listen to me when I told them I was writing a mystery, not a romance, um, for definitely rejecting the fact that Antonio was supposed to be the bad guy in the book, um, because they apparently knew the truth before I did. So anyway, thank you very much, uh, everyone. And, uh, yeah, thank you. Our next presenter crosses genre boundaries to write stories with a romantic heart set against magical backdrops and is the president of the Golden Network Chapter, which is excited to welcome and support the first class of RAMP participants this year, here to present the Vivian Award for Best First Published Book. Please welcome J.C. Jarvis. First times, we've all had them. First time eating our favorite food. First time meeting our best friend. First time having a book hangover. First time at the Vivian Awards. For some of our finalists, they're also celebrating the first time they published a book. It's a first they'll never forget. And RWA is honored to be part of their journey. The Vivian finalists for best first published book are Susan Antony for Cherokee Summer, published by the Wild Rose Press. Victoria Aveline for Choosing Theo, the Clacanian series, self-published. Laralyn Doran for A Fast Woman, self-published. A.P. Murray for Greedy Heart, published by Thule. Julia Skye for Her Outback Driver, independently published. Christina Mitchell for How to Stay, published by Pegasus Pen Publishing. Anne-Marie Boyle for Love Me Like a Love Song, published by Dahlia Media. Janine Inglert, for Lovely Digits, published by Soulmate Publishing. Ashley R. King, for Painting the Lines, published by City Owl Press. Allison Ashley for Perfect Distraction, published by Entangled. 
Robin Chalmers for A Song of Secrets, self-published. Whoops, the Vivian goes to Love Me Like a Love Song, Anne-Marie Boyle. Oh, my God. I'm unmuted, right? I don't know if I have a second. Like someone else this evening, I have been telling every friend and family member that I was not going to win this. And so whew, I promise I'm not going to cry because my mother's doing enough of that. <laughs> so thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm ecstatic. I'm humbled, especially with the number of amazing books in this category. It, it was just an honor to be nominated. So this is icing on the cake. Um, this award is so meaningful to everybody, but when it's your first book and you put it out there and no one knows your name and you cross your fingers and you hope somebody reads it and to um, then get an award like this, it's a little bit overwhelming. I need to say thank you as many other people have done tonight to RWA and the Vivian Award Committee. I know you worked very, very hard at revamping this award process. I appreciate all the effort and your belief that this competition and this organization could grow and get better and start again. It's, um, it's a much more diverse pool than we've seen in the past. And I hope as this continues that that keeps happening, that we see more and more of that. I need to say a special thank you to Jolene Perry who edited this book and to the team at Quamber Designs who gave me the cover of my dreams. I started with a different cover and went to the new person and asked for something different and I got exactly what I wanted. Thank you um, to friends and family who have listened to me talk about this author journey on and on and on. I am so thankful for you and to my husband who is my alpha reader and always the calm in my storm. Your love and support mean more to me than I can possibly ever say. Um, to friends and family, if I haven't said thank you, thank you again. Um, and to the readers, reviewers, and the bookstagrammers who have taken a chance on this book and this debut author, it truly, your love and support mean more than I can ever say. So um, thanks to Grace and Andrew. Um, they're the couple of my heart. They say you always remember your first. <laughs> I will remember them. They, they live inside of me. So thank you so much. This will be an evening I won't forget. It's the way to end a pretty good night. Thanks. Wow, it's been quite a night. Congratulations to all the finalists and winners of the inaugural Vivian Awards. I'm about to sail off with Joan Wilder, but before I go, I wanted to share some exciting news. At her request, Ms. Stevens will be receiving copies of all of tonight's winning books. The first Vivian's for RWA, RWA's first Vivian. We hope she enjoys them. Well, that's it for me. To wrap up our night, please welcome back RWA President Laquette. Good evening, everyone. I'm Laquette, and it is my absolute honor to stand, well, sit before you tonight. I'd like to thank all of the participants, attendees, and all of you streaming this ceremony tonight for coming together to support our finalists, our organization, and the romance genre. Congratulations to all of the finalists and winners of this inaugural class of the Vivian Awards. Whether or not you won tonight, you've become living romance history, legends in your own time. Be proud of that. Thank you to the award ceremony committee for creating a wonderful celebratory experience for every finalist tonight. You went above and beyond the charge you were given. <clears throat> As a finalist, I'm honored by all of the effort and thoughtfulness you've put into this ceremony on our behalf. As your president, I am proud of the work you've done 
and the magnificent way you represented this organization. To Caraway Carter, thank you for being our host. I told you you were, good, you were the perfect choice for this job. And after the way you entertained us tonight, I still stand by that statement. To the judges, thank you for sacrificing your time and participating in our very first Vivians. Your hard work produced one of the most diverse classes of finalists we've seen in a long time. <clears throat> to RWA staff, thank you for every single thing you've done for this organization. I'm gonna say that again. To RWA staff, thank you for every single thing you've done for this organization. Thank you for every single sacrifice you've made and continue to make for this organization and its members. RWA could not function without you. To my fellow board members, I am so incredibly proud of you and all the work you've done. Thank you for your fortitude, your sacrifice, and your service. Two years ago, then President Helen K. Diamond said the 2019 ceremony reminded us of who we are and how great we can be when we come together as a community and welcome all members. As the current president, I wholeheartedly agree. Tonight, I see the strength and determination to be greater than our past while still striving for a brilliant future. We continue to listen, learn, and evolve as an organization so that we may press toward our goal of being more inclusive and diverse. We are resolute in our mission to improve the culture so that we can support all romance authors and uplift our genre. On behalf of RWA, the board, the members, chapter leaders, and our staff, thank you for your continued support and good night.